won't be too redundant. But first of all, I want to say uh, thank you to the Sarah Club and also to my family and friends that are here today. So thank you for being here. It's a little overwhelming. I wasn't sure what to expect, but uh, um, it's exciting to see all of your faces and to know that you've been a part of my journey. is It's an, it's an amazing thing for me to reflect on. So uh, I also wanted to share what I'm happy about. Everybody went around and shared what they were happy about. And to see that there's a faith community here. It seems like the Sarah Club has a, a nice faith community here. And that's so important in the spiritual life, to have people that we can journey together with. And I saw that present here. So that made me very, very happy. Um, so before we begin today, um, one of the things I ask the folks that I speak to is to pray along with me. To, to me, when I give a vocation talk or when I give a presentation, it's not just an intellectual exercise. It's an opportunity to enter into the mystery of God. And we as Catholics believe that our God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So I encourage you to pray along with me to see if God has anything to speak to you today through what I offer as, as part of my reflection. I want to read a passage here that I found in the Scriptures that I think encapsulates uh, what I experienced through my calling. This comes from the book of Acts. So this takes place right after Jesus ascended into heaven, after his death and resurrection. And it says here, It will come to pass in the last days, God says, that I will pour out my portion of my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters, young men, your, your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Indeed, upon my servants and my handmaids, I will pour out a portion of my spirit. And in a nutshell, this is what happened uh, to, to me. I'm, a, I'm nobody special. Everybody in this room knows who I am, uh, knows all my weaknesses, knows all my flaws. Uh, it's, and it's humbling to speak to this group because... Uh, many of the people that I do speak to, um, they don't know me. So the, the, the idea behind that is this, the scripture passage, a prophet is not accepted in his hometown. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I kind of feel uh, humbled by that. But let me, let me share with you what uh, vocation for me has, has been and what I've experienced in that. Um, all of us in this room have a vocation. Okay, it's not just the priests, it's not just the religious, it's not just the deacons, it's everyone. And that was the call of John Paul II, a universal call to holiness. And that's so hard because many of us that went through the pre-Vatican II generation, after the changes of Vatican II, uh, just went through an upheaval in terms of our catechesis, in terms of what we were taught. Um, but I think John Paul II really capture the gospel message well, that every person is called to know Christ and enter into that relationship. Um, wherever we're at, married, single, religious, priest, um, we're all called to eternal life. So that for me began here in Pueblo. Uh, my home parish growing up was um, uh, St. Tres of Lisieux. And I was baptized at St. Francis Xavier uh, over in Bessemer. Uh, grew up playing sports, grew up as an altar boy. Some of you guys remember me as an altar boy at St. Therese. Uh, but again, I was not, we were not super Catholics growing up. We were not uh, a family of, you know, just complete religious observance. I mean, it was important to us, but for me it was, you know, just something that we did. And it wasn't forced. I mean, I sure, surely uh, wanted to be involved, but it, there wasn't a whole lot of um, spirituality in it for me. Um, although I, was, I would consider myself very um, spiritual as a young man, I could remember my parents praying with me in my room before I go to bed. I could remember uh, you know, having kind of conversations <laughs> with God as a young man, but nothing, very, nothing profound, I don't think out of the ordinary. Um, so very quickly for me, my, my religion became sports. Many of you pointed out when I walked into the room that I'm an athletic person, I lift weights. Here in Pueblo, what, what is more important than uh, a football game at, you know, at the, the stadium down uh, 
I mean, the bell game, the <laughs> candy game, I mean, that's, in a sense, our cultural kind of religion in a way. And the Broncos and you name it. So from very early on, uh, I was very interested in that type of uh, experience. And uh, actually, it was my stepmother who encouraged me to play uh, baseball uh, for old timers. And I went out to try out. I don't know the brother uh, whose daughter is here with me uh, today. And he was good at sports, so I, I wanted to be, you know, kind of like him. So we would go out and just every summer get involved in old timers, get involved in Little League, get involved in, uh, eventually got involved in wrestling. And it was something that I felt um, excited about. But again, the whole religious thing was not on the brain, not important to me. So um, I went through the sacraments. First Communion, Reconciliation, uh, but this by this time I was already starting to kind of find an identity for myself. Now, I don't know if you guys remember in the early 90s here in Pueblo, but there was a lot of gang activity, there still is to some degree, a lot of drug activity, and this was in the public schools. The Catholic schools closed here in the 70s, so in the public schools, anything goes. Anything goes. And I could vividly remember in sixth grade, people engaged in sexual activity, drinking alcohol, and using drugs. And may, many of your, you know, grandkids are, are experiencing that uh, today. And it's scary. It's scary. But for me, one of the outlets that I had was sports. So I, I tried to focus on organized sports to not get involved in that. But there was a lot of peer pressure at the time. But I didn't have anything more than that, than my peer group and my family, to find answers and to find a foundation in. So by the time I got to high school, uh, it became very hard not to resist uh, the culture and, and uh, peer pressure and a desire to be happy and a desire to be accepted and a desire to be popular. And for me, it was hard because uh, I come from a divorced family, both of my families are here today. And that created within me an emotional void. And as a young man, you know, we, the way we try to fill that is by our ego, by getting the trophies, by winning the state championships, by dating the cheerleaders, by, you know, doing all the things that the culture says is going to make us happy. And I went right after it. Right after it. Um, you know, church may or may not have been an option if maybe maybe if my girlfriend was going to church but that was about it you know and i remember my stepfather here just you know ready to to break because he was faithful in going to church and he used to have to drag us to church sometimes so <laughs> um but I, i'm certainly grateful for that now but it, there was no sense of of the transcendence no sense of what is this all about it was all focused on me all of my teachers in high school wanted me to make uh, money. I was good at math and science. Um, so the next step for me would have been uh, to, to make money, to make you know a, a name for myself, a life for myself. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it, it, it was the only option that was presented. And that, you know, to this day I, I struggle with because there are many options. Um, but that one uh, was the, presented as the only option. So the thing on, on my mind and heart that I would, wanted to do growing up, I love the movie Top Gun with Tom Cruise. And I wanted to be a fighter pilot. I really did, you know, because that was like the coolest guy ever. You know, he had the motorcycle, the plane, the girls, everything. And, uh, you know, I really wanted to do that. And um, so my teachers and my parents encouraged me to um, apply for the Air Force Academy. And I ended up... Uh, because my grades were decent, uh, getting a congressional nomination to the Naval Academy. Uh, so for me, that was quite an accomplishment. You know, I, I wasn't the smartest kid in school, but I was definitely hardworking and, and, and athletic. Uh, so that was, you know, a, a boost of, of courage for me. Um, I was dating a girl at the time who was older and went into college and went through confirmation. Uh, I was confirmed by um, our, um, Bishop Tafoya at... Uh, St. Therese, but it wasn't anything that I was super interested in. It was more about going, it was more about graduating from the church than uh, entering into an adult life into the church and into 
to be completely honest, at that time, I only went through that experience because my girlfriend did. Um, and I can remember being...